Hello everyone. Welcome to another module on the renal system. In this module, we will talk about the renal tubular defects. Okay. So the different kind of renal tubular defects are Fanconki syndrome, Barter syndrome, Gittelman syndrome, Liddell syndrome, and SAME that I'll come to in some time. Okay. The first syndrome that we talk about is the Fanconki syndrome. In Fanconki syndrome, there is a generalized reabsorption defect in the proximal convoluted tubule. That means the reabsorption that takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule is impaired, which results in inappropriate reabsorption of substances like amino acid, glucose, bicarbonate, phosphate, and all these substances that are absorbed by proximal convoluted tubule. Now, since these substances are not being able to reabsorb, then the excretion in the urine increases. Is it clear? Now, the effects of Fanconki syndrome are it can lead to metabolic acidosis. Since a lot of bicarbonate is lost in the urine, there is excessive generation of H plus ions, and hence leads to metabolic acidosis. It is related to something called as proximal renal tubular acidosis, which is a type two renal tubular acidosis. So, hence, Fanconki syndrome is related to proximal renal tubular acidosis. Okay. Now, since a lot of phosphate is lost and not reabsorbed by the proximal convoluted tubule, there is hypophosphatemia and osteopenia. Now, Fanconki syndrome shows symptoms of diabetic. but there is no hyperglycemia okay now what happens is in diabetes the some symptoms of diabetes are polyuria polydipsia this presence of glucose in the urine and similarly in fanconki syndrome the symptoms are just like diabetes symptoms okay now what are the causes of fanconki syndrome the basic causes of fanconki syndrome are the hereditary defects which includes wilson disease tyrosinemia and glycogen storage diseases so these are the three basic hereditary causes of fanconki syndrome okay now the other causes includes ischemia of the proximal convoluted tubule or multiple myeloma or nephrotoxic drugs now different nephrotoxic drugs are ifosfamide and cisplatin now cisplatin is a chemotherapeutic agent Fanconki syndrome can also occur due to excessive lead that is lead poisoning. So is it clear? Now let us talk about the Barter syndrome. In Barter syndrome there is a reabsorption defect in the thin thick ascending loop of Henle. In the Fanconki syndrome it was the correct the proximal convoluted tubule whereas in the Barter syndrome there is thick ascending loop of Henle. We all know that in the thick ascending loop of henle there is sodium potassium and two chloride ion co-transporter which pulls all these three ions inside the interstitium of the blood correct now what happens is due to the reabsorption defect in the thick ascending loop a lot of sodium potassium and chloride are not been able to reabsorb and hence are excreted in the urine is it clear now what are the effects of barter syndrome The effects of Barter syndrome are metabolic alkalosis, hypokalemia, and hypercalciuria. This is really important. Hypercalciuria. So this is the distinguishing feature between Barter syndrome and Gittelman syndrome. Is it clear? This is an autosomal recessive cause, so it is genetically transmitted, and it presents similarly to chronic loop diuretic use. Now, what happens in loop diuretic use is there is excessive diuresis due to the action on blocking of this channel, and similarly, the same thing happens in the Barter syndrome. Okay. Now, let us talk about the third one, that is the Gittelman syndrome. It is a reabsorption defect of sodium chloride in the DCT. So in the thick ascending loop of Henle it was the Barter syndrome which affected the sodium potassium two chloride ion co-transporter in the Fanconki syndrome it was the PCT the entire reabsorption of PCT was impaired and in the Gittelman syndrome it is a DCT and the reabsorption of NaCl is impaired 
Now, only the metabolic acidosis is present only in Fanconky syndrome, whereas all the other syndromes have metabolic alkalosis. So there's metabolic alkalosis, hypomagnesemia, and hypokalemia. Is it clear? The distinguishing feature between Barter syndrome and Gittelman syndrome is there is hypocalciuria. In this, there is hypocalciuria. Is it clear? Now, just like how Barter syndrome was related to the use of loop diuretics, Gittelman syndrome is similar to the use of thiazide diuretics, which acts on the distal convoluted tubule. Okay. Even the cause of Gittelman syndrome is a hereditary cause that is an autosomal recessive disease. But Gittelman syndrome is a less severe disease compared to Barter syndrome. Is it clear? So the difference between the Barter syndrome and Gittelman syndrome is hypocalciuria and hypercalciuria. Is it clear? Now let us talk about Liddell syndrome. Now, what happens in Liddell syndrome is there is an excessive functioning of sodium channel degradation. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button and do subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comment section below which topics do you want me to explain. Thank you.